Hello again, I am Blunty, currently <laughs> surrounded by microphones, which quite frankly is making me feel a little bit claustrophobic here at the desk, but it's for a good purpose because one of these new microphones is a brand new microphone that was just announced today, and it is that one right there. It's from Blue Microphones, who, I mean, if you don't recognize the brand, then you obviously haven't looked into microphones at all for your PC. Uh, they've been around for a couple of decades now, and they've been consistently doing some of the best or at least most popular uh, USB microphones out there for content creators and streamers. I say not necessarily the best, but most popular because there's this thing, which, which I'm sure you, you'll recognize, the Snowball. It's all right. I, I never liked it much and I never really used it for any content after I got it. Um, it, it was just, it was, eh, I, I had better stuff already. But as the years went on, Blue continually sort of released new mics based on sort of consumer feedback and stuff. And then you had the Blue Yeti over here, which was widely regarded as one of the better, uh, if not the best, USB microphone option out there. I, you know, when it came to something of this functionality and this price bracket, I kind of preferred uh, this, which is the Razer Siren Pro. Uh, between the two, they have very, very, very similar microphones in many respects, but I just like the design and the usability and the little, it's got a little screen on there, which makes usability a little bit better than, but point is the, the Blue Yeti was extremely popular uh, for a very good reason. It was a very well priced, very powerful, very good sounding uh, USB microphone. Uh, then they bought out this, which is the Blue Yeti Nano, which is very similar to this in many ways, just with some extra features stripped off. It had fewer pickup patterns, for example, because most people who buy microphones like this are just doing this sort of stuff, content creation at their desk. They don't need extra pickup patterns. They don't need back and front. They don't need the stereo. They just need a couple of basic pickup patterns to get the job done at the desk to make things really, really nice. And that's what I liked about the Nano. Now, a little while back, I personally switched from using this microphone, the uh, Razer Siren Pro, for doing a lot of voiceover stuff and streaming and things like that. Uh, to this Sennheiser microphone here, which is one of those little handheld mics. I use it on the boom stand, and I love this thing. I've got a full video about this thing telling you all about, all about how much I love it. It is extremely powerful and extremely uh, flexible, and it also comes with a cable you can plug directly into your phone, which I use uh, when I'm sort of out at events and, and, and conventions and stuff like that, doing handheld stuff. I record to my phone, sync it up later. It's wonderful. But now coming back to the subject of this video, this one, the Blue Yeti X, or possibly Blue Yeti 10. We don't, we, I don't know whether they're doing a, an Apple thing with the X. Is it X or is it 10? Is it Roman numeral or is it letter? Who knows? I haven't seen any uh, like video material where they have a voiceover for it or something. I've just been sent the microphone and, uh, and a little two-page PDF just to spruiking about the new features and stuff. What do you reckon? X or 10? Probably makes sense to be X, right? So Blue say the Yeti X has been a refinement, an evolution of all the feedback they've gotten over the years from the other Yeti product lines, these two guys here, because they have been very, very popular again with streamers and content creators and the like. You'll see them all the time. Uh, I usually try and hide my microphone off camera, just, just, just outside of frame because it's distracting both for me and for you, I feel like. But, you know... A lot of streamers have this this thing where they just put the microphone in front of their face. It drives me insane. Uh, they, they give you this little cheat sheet uh, when, when you unpack the microphone. And I just wanted to point out uh, that there's one little diagram down the bottom here that I love. It's 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 pointing out that it's a side address microphone. You see streamers all the time. Look for it. That do use the Yeti microphone, but they've got it sort of pointed directly at them like this because they think it's like a handheld microphone. And that's why they that's why it sounds like crap. But no, it's a it's a front address microphone. The the sound goes in that way. So if you're talking into the microphone that way, you're doing a dumb. It's the same thing with this one, same thing with this one. And of course, this one's a handheld mic. Uh, so that's 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 the end on address as well. But look look for it. Look, look, look for your favorite streamers and stuff and, and find out who are the idiots who are talking end on to these, these microphones because they didn't bother reading the little cheat sheets that's in there. I'll start off with a couple of the more obvious thing on the front of the microphone where the dial is for changing the uh, sort of volume and gain and headphone volume because there is a headphone output on this as well. So it can act as a USB sound card basically, which is convenient sometimes. Uh, but that has a little row of LEDs around it, which I don't love. I love visual feedback like that. It's really clear and easy to see. You know, if, if you're in the dark, if you haven't got sort of bright lighting, if you've got sort of subdued lighting and things, it's really, really easy to see where you're setting that level at. The issue I have with it is it also has a VU meter. So it dances up and down as you talk. So at a glance, without having to look at your recording software or whatnot, which usually has a VU meter of its own, uh, whether or not you're, you're peaking and how your levels are doing, which is nice and convenient. 
trouble is when you've got the microphone in front of your face, maybe you're playing a game or something because you're a game streamer, having, having lights dance constantly is a little bit distracting for me. Uh, I would love to be able to turn that off, but you can't. There is software to control the color of the various LEDs on this thing. So you can change the, you know, what, what color it is for the good, uh, what color it is for the sort of, oh, look out, you're about to peek, and what color it is for, oh, no, you're peeking. You can you can cu completely customize all those colors and things. You can customize the uh, color of the ring around the knob for uh, whether or not the microphone is on, whether or not it's muted. You can make it flash if it's muted to be more eye-catching. It's got all these lovely customization features, but without the ability to just turn it off. It is a software thing, so hopefully, among the feedback to listen to for this microphone is updating the software to let me turn the VU metering off because it is catastrophically distracting for me, just having those lights dance in the corner of my eye. I hate it. I hate it. They have a new four capsule design in this thing, which allows for several different pickup pattern modes. Again, most people are just going to use it on the front facing pattern mode because most people are going to do exactly this because this is what they market the microphone to streamers and content creators and musicians and stuff. But if you do want stereo, if you do want front and back, or if you do want sort of omnidirectional, depending on what you're doing, maybe you're a, a musician or something like that, or, or depends on what, you, what you're recording and where you're recording it. It's nice to have those pickup patterns, but yeah, quite frankly, most of us are just going to use the cardioid, the front-facing address, cardioid one to avoid getting extra room noise and, and stuff coming through the recording. So so far everything's been really nice. It's got the it's got a lovely new design as opposed to I never really loved the design of this this lozenge thing. It's kind of hideous and ugly. The the the, the nano had a lovely nice uh, sort of more clean, more stylized design, and they brought that sort of design language across to the X now as well. And I've got it on a microphone boom arm right now, but of course it does come with a stand and I'll show you some press shots of the, they sent along with the stand because I took this off immediately because you should too. If you're buying one of these microphones and you're just using the desk stand, that's, that's a really bad, a bad idea. It's nice to have it, sure, but it's kind of a bad idea because vibrations just travel up through this thing. I mean, it's got a nice weighty heavy base and a soft pad and everything and one of the knobs just fell off onto the ground there somewhere. I'll take the other one off so that doesn't happen again. But it's a really, really nice stand. It's very solid and heavy and things. But yeah, just having this on the desk, especially if you're a game streamer where your keyboard and mouse are also on the desk. So anytime you hit the desk, all the vibrations go straight up through this into the microphone. You get the sort of booming clicking. It's just terrible. Get yourself a microphone, boom arm of some description, get it off your desk. Uh, but yeah, it does come with a stand just in case you like it. So, so far... We've talked about the niceties of the microphone, the, the design, the sort of new elements of interface on the microphone itself, the knobs and stuff and the lights. But what makes this stand out most of all from the competition that's out there? And there, there's a lot of competition out there for nice sounding USB microphones. I mean, once upon a time, it was really hard to find a good microphone for your computer these days. You're sport for choice. But it's the software that comes through here. And you may or might have known this, but a little while back now, Logitech bought out Blue microphones are owned by Logitech now. So the new software control, the new blue voice software control, I want to bring it up for you there. Let me just move to the side here. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you've heard this one enough, right? I'm gonna get this out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. So the new software interface is all built into the Logitech G Hub, which is Logitech software for controlling their keyboards and mice and the lighting and the modes and the adjustments and the you know mouse tracking speed, all that kind of stuff. You know, all, all these companies have this little plug-in software now to control their fancier and ever fancier keyboards and mice, particularly in the gaming space. So G Hub is Logitech's one. Uh, and I really quite like it. It's very lightweight, it's unobtrusive, it's quick and easy to use. I like the general design language and the interface and the UI and everything. So I'm not perturbed at all that the Blue Microphone interface is part of the G-Hub now. Uh, so let me just switch out here. As you can see here, we've got a lot of options here. We've got three little tabs down the side here. Uh, let's go to the 3.5 millimeter output first. This is your headphone output. So you can sort of uh, fix up and mix and adjustment and EQs and bass boost and cinematic sound. You can do all the usual stuff you can do with sort of any kind of sound output or USB card that you might be used to. I don't think many people actually use the output of their microphone to go straight to the headphones because it just makes life a little trickier when you're doing certain things, especially for streaming through OBS and stuff like that. But it's here if you need it and there's a lot of control here. Here is the lighting options I was talking about before. So you can change the color of the microphone being live or muted. Let's go, uh, when we're muted, I want it to be, I don't know, pale blue. No, red makes more sense. Um, but you can, you can fiddle up that and you can make it blink or breathe if you want to. I've got the muted uh, thing breathing. So it just sort of throbs red at me when it's muted, which is really nice. In fact, I'm gonna right now, I'm gonna hit that mute button. I did mean to do this before I got into the software, but I'm gonna hit the mute button because sometimes on microphones, when you hit the mute button, it sends an awful loud click through the audio interface and it's terrible. So 
go. We are now muted. You're listening to me through the Sennheiser microphone now again, so you can hear what I'm saying. And I'm going to unmute it now. So having a mute switch on the microphone itself is always a bit of a risk because you have to touch the microphone to click it in the first place, which means handling noise and things like that. But I haven't tested this in any of my test recordings or anything so far. I forgot to, but now we've done it live. Do it live. So back to the software. You can... Uh, switch out all, all the different colors for the mode you're adjusting at the moment. If you press and hold the button in for a couple of seconds, you switch between these modes. So that's why you need color codes there. So you can adjust the uh, gain of the microphone and headphone and direct monitoring all separately. And again, you can go ahead and make it breathe or flexed and things like that. So uh, now here's what I was talking about before, the metering pattern. This you can fix out. This is green by default, as, as you, you would normally expect a VU thing to be green but I, I'm kind of liking purple recently so I changed it to purple hopefully that I was hoping the purple lights would be less distracting than bright green lights because it's a less bright color but no they're still pretty distracting so anyway I would love to be able to just turn this off just just blank it out somehow but no you can you can change the hue you can change the sort of brightness uh but you can't you, you think, I can't choose black basically <laughs> I would love to be able to turn this off I would love to be able to turn off the normal metering but have the high and peak so the only time it ever flashes would be when I'm in, in danger zone of, of peeking out. I would love to be able to turn the normal dancing lights off. If you're listening, anyone from blue, I've said it seven or eight times now, I need, I want to turn this off because it's really distracting. Don't know how this didn't come up in your testing. What kind of people you're testing this with? What kind of eyes they have? But mine are sensitive to motion as, as normal human eyes are and flashing motion lights are distracting. Anyway, this is the powerhouse right here. This is where you get all your control, and this is why I like this microphone and why I think I will actually switch out to this microphone for my desktop and streaming needs. Because as you've been hearing, I've been doing the comparison surely all the way through the video of the Sennheiser versus uh, the Blue Yeti X. Uh, near enough as makes no difference. They both sound excellent. There, is, there are some character differences between them, as there is with most different kind of microphones and, and pickups and things like that. But I think you'll agree, the, the Blue Yeti X is sounding superb. So the reason I like this, though, is unlike the Sennheiser, which every different app I use that with, I mean, it's usually just OBS, but every time I use it in some other situation, I have to make any adjustments I need separately. With this, because it all runs through a base software and you've got this much control here, any setup you do here as regards to the sound quality, the uh, high pass, the noise reduction, the gates, the compressors, the DSers, the limiters, and it's all here, by the way. Um, I kind of really glossed over that when I opened up this software here, but this is incredibly powerful stuff. Um, and it's not just sort of basic stuff. If we click here, you can go all the way in. You can attract, uh, change your attack and threshold and release and hysteric, uh, hysterics and ratio and gain. And, and it's just incredibly powerful. It looks really simple. And if you don't know what any of these terms mean, just trust me, it's an incredibly powerful thing to be able to do this just across the board. So whatever you're using your mic with, whether it be OBS or Discord or in-game chat or anything, having this kind of power uh, with all these, these different kinds of filters and, and limiters and compressors and stuff like that is incredibly useful for getting the absolute best sound possible, for eliminating background noise, for only picking up your voice when you're actually speaking instead of sort of rustling bits of paper or clicking your mouse or something. Uh, and of course, you've got voice EQ and things like this. Now, the other thing I love about this is there's a whole bunch of presets here, and you can also set custom presets. So you can fine tune all of this how you like it for several different nodes, if you like, and, and have it all ready to go at a single click there. It is remarkably powerful in such a beautiful, simple, elegant interface. Now, this is what I like uh, about this software in particular, as opposed to a lot of other software where, you know, a lot of other microphone has software that, that you know, has some of this stuff, usually EQ, not normally things like, uh, I mean, they've normally got noise reduction, but DSs, compressors, and limiters, that's, and expander gates, uh, that's normally not in most microphones you get. You can do that in software and OBS and things like that, but having it here again, incredibly helpful. This is what I like that. Microphone test. You can actually record a sample right here and have it play back on a loop while you fiddle with all of your different adjustments. So instead of having to make a change to the settings, do a recording, listen to the recording and decide, oh, okay, maybe a little bit too aggressive on the gate there, make it a change, do another recording. You can just make a base recording which it does without any of the filters applied and applies the filters after the fact and just let it play through again and again and again as you fiddle live. So you can really zero in on exactly the kind of sound and effects that you want. It is such a simple idea 
And I don't know why I haven't thought of doing this before. I don't know why, I don't know why it's in, not in every piece of audio software, but it's incredibly useful for setting this thing up and making it sound exactly how you like. Let's uh, let's do a test recording, and I'll show you what I mean. <coughs> let me let me. What am I going to read? I'll, I'll read a bit of I'll read a bit of blurb off their press release they sent me. So here we go. We're excited to introduce the Yeti X with Blue voice technology and continue the evolution of our renowned lineup of USB microphones. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is play that back and show you some of these built-in presets here. Some of which you'll never want to use, some of which you may want to use if you're doing sort of special kinds of content and you want to emulate a radio voice or something. Um, but some is just a nice base level to start your own custom adjustments for. So let me show you. We're excited to introduce the Yeti X with Blue voice technology and continue the evolution of our renowned lineup of USB microphones. We're excited to introduce the Yeti X with Blue voice technology and continue the evolution of our renowned lineup of USB microphones. We're excited to introduce the Yeti X with Blue voice technology and continue the evolution of our renowned lineup of USB microphones. We're excited to introduce the Yeti X with Blue voice technology and continue the evolution of our renowned lineup of USB microphones. We're excited to introduce the Yeti X with Blue voice technology and continue the evolution of our renowned lineup of USB microphones. We're excited to introduce the Yeti X with Blue voice technology and continue the evolution of our renowned lineup of USB microphones. So if you are looking for an upgrade path to the microphone you currently use, which, you know, odds are it probably is a Blue Yeti uh, or something like that, then yeah, I, I think I can strongly recommend the, the Blue Yeti X as a powerful upgrade path for those of you who want to take a little more control over what you're doing. Um, what do you reckon? I think I've talked for long enough for you to be able to get a pretty good idea about how this thing sounds. So I'm going to sign off now with a little bit of proximity effect, leaning in so I'm out of focus, but really close to the microphone. And I guess I should also yell because I've got a limiter on here as well. So hopefully we don't peek out. Uh, but that's, that's kind of the whole point of the uh, expanders and gates and compressors and stuff like that. So no matter where, how, how much, uh, where your volume is at, you come through kind of consistently. I don't know what that was. What a weird way to end a video. Like and subscribe. I should do an entire microphone review just doing the cadence noise. Probably deeply unpopular.